Why do you think so many people are burying their heads in the sand when it comes to collapse in general? This question has perplexed me for the past years and became even more pressing for me in the light of the current pandemic and the looming collapse of our society, which you can already see in my country, Lebanon. The amorphism of people toward systemic risk is difficult to comprehend if you have a logical mind. As I became more aware of this amorphism, I came across two materials that explained it in part. The first piece of information can be found in Jared Diamond's book, Collapse. It's a fascinating book that you should read. I will put the link in the description. Somewhere around the end of the book, after describing the collapse or non-collapse of several societies throughout history, Jared Diamond attempts to understand why some people irrationally fail to even attempt to solve a problem that cannot be ignored. Psychological denial is one of the solutions. This denial occurs when what you perceive induces such intensely painful emotion that you end up denying your own perception in order to avoid the pain, even though ignoring the perception may prove ultimately disastrous. Now, Jared Diamond offers an interesting example of such psychological denial in the face of potential disaster scenarios involving people who live near a dam. Dam explosions have been uncommon in recent years, but you may have heard about the dam in Brazil that exploded three years ago, killing 270 people, and dam births have killed hundreds of thousands of people throughout history. The majority of fatalities are caused by people who live downstream of the dam and are hit by a tsunami if the dam fails. When attitude pollsters ask people downstream of the dam if they are worried about the dam bursting, there is an interesting evolution of fear of the dam as distance from the dam varies. Naturally, those living the furthest away from the dam have the least fear. The fear grows as one gets closer to the dam. However, when you get really close to the dam, the inhabitants' fear of it vanishes. In other words, the people living immediately beneath the dam, who are certain to perish if the dam bursts, appear unconcerned. And Jared Diamond attributes this lack of concern to psychological denial. These people refuse to consider the possibility of them and their families dying as a result of something that could happen. It's their only chance to keep their sanity in the face of such a ruined risk. The story should make you think about things you see in your daily life. It may be difficult to relate it with climate change or collapse, but with the current pandemic, it's really simple. Everyone, and I mean everyone, is aware that the long COVID exists. The figures are also widely disseminated and it appears that around 2% of infected people will suffer from a severely debilitating long COVID. Would these people play Russian roulette with a single bullet in 50 chambers and each reinfection is another Russian roulette? Faced with this harsh reality, they decided that the pandemic was over and that everyone's sniffle was just a cold, just like the dam that cannot burst. Also, only 2% of people watching this video will subscribe and share it. So please do it now. It's crucial for the algorithm. You can support me on Patreon or buy me a coffee on the other platforms if you enjoy my videos and if you want to see more of them. This would enable me to continue providing free videos. The second piece of content tells the story of George Klein, a Jew during the Jewish ethnic cleansing during World War II. George was able to read a report known as the Auschwitz Report at that time. It was written by two Auschwitz escapees. As you might expect, all the details of fate of Jews arriving to Auschwitz were included in this report. At the time, Hungary's Jews had not yet been deported, and George attempted to warn his family and friends about what the report revealed. Unfortunately, his relatives and friends, like the majority of Hungarian Jews, could not believe these atrocities were taking place. When the Nazis arrived and pressed Hungarian Jews into forced labor, only a few of them, including George, fled before being loaded into one of the deportation trains. George essentially survived the war by hiding underground until the end. During his life, George was able to find and become friends with the author of the Auschwitz report that saved his life. During one of their conversations, the writer told George, and I quote, 
prisoners who knew full well that no one ever returned from the gas chambers repressed such knowledge as they themselves lined up for execution in front of the chamber doors. If that isn't an example of psychological denial, I'm not sure what it is. And it reminds me of people saying that this year's drought, flood or fire is a once in a century occurrence. Every year they say it with a blank expression. I learned about the story from Dr. David Berger. You should definitely follow him on Twitter. Finally, all of this reminds me of Edmund Burke's prose, which can be applied to our current problems. All that is necessary for the collapse is that good men do nothing. And if you are wondering why climate change or pandemics are so important to me and why it should be to you and your loved ones, watch this video to learn about systemic risk which explains why zero COVID or nuclear power plants are the only logical way forward. You can support me on Patreon and other platforms and a big thanks to the MVPs who have already done so. We keep in touch on Twitter and Instagram.